Morning. Morning. My name, My name is David, David Tattenhorst. Tattenhorst. I, I am a retired, retired United, United Methodist, Methodist pastor. pastor. I retired, I retired from, from St. Luke, Luke United, United Methodist, Methodist Church, Church in Bryn, Bryn Mawr uh, last, last June. June. Almost, Almost getting, getting the end, the end of the year where I can talk to my folks, folks again. again. They, they, they asked, asked me to stay, stay away, away for a year. I've been good. good. Went, we even went, went to Mexico, Mexico and, uh, for, the for the last, last month. month. I was, I was in, in Mexico, Mexico with my wife, wife in March and studied and Spanish. Spanish. I had a great, great time, time down, down there. there. When, when I was, I was at St. Luke, Luke and Bryn, Bryn Mawr, the organist say on Sunday after Easter, now they're not going to be many people there. That, that means, means we, we got to do really, really good. good. <laughs> See, because, because if people, people are going to come on that, that Sunday, Sunday, then you, then you have, have to really, really do a good job. job. And you and have, have to, like, and he, he would do special, special music on, on Sunday, Sunday after Easter. Easter. So, so I, I hear, happening here, 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 I'm really, really glad, glad to hear it, it and glad, glad to be with you today. Welcome. And thanks for welcoming me. Let us pray. We thank God for this beautiful day. For your, for your presence, presence with, with us on this, this second Sunday, Sunday of Easter. May, May we know you in, in our hearts, hearts through, through the power and love that shared in this place, place through the, the beauty of this service, service through, through the music, through the, the words shared, shared through, through the community, community formed, the love that, that is engendered to take out into, into the world. world. Be, Be with, with us this day, day. O oh God. God. Amen. Amen. Peter, 1, uh, verse 3 through 9, Nancy's going to read that, and then Pastor David will introduce us uh, to his reading after the children's message. A living hope. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his, By his great, great mercy, mercy, he has, he has given, given us a new birth, birth into, into a living, living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, dead. And, and into an inheritance that is, that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, you who, are who are being protected by the, by the power, power of God, God through faith for salvation, salvation ready, ready to be revealed for the, for the last time. time. In, in this, you rejoice, you rejoice. Even, even if now, for a little, little while, you have had, had to suffer various trials. Faith, being, being more, more precious, precious than gold, that, that through, through perishable, though perishable, though perishable is, is tested by, by fire, fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and, and honor when, when Jesus Christ is revealed. revealed. Although, Although you have, have not seen him, him you, you love, love him. him. And, and even, even though, though you do not believe in him, him and rejoice with within an indescribable and glorious joy, joy you, are you are receiving the outcome of your faith, faith the salvation, salvation of, of your souls. souls. Here, Here is reading God, God bless the word to our heart. heart. Um, okay. okay. Can, can I have children? <laughs> I've got something to show you guys today. You ready? What is this? <laughs> okay. What are these? Ooh. 
there's two paper clips. Two paper clips. Now, I'm going to tell you a story. You may believe me or not, but do you think I can... Now, you see the paper clips are separated. Do you think I can clip them together using the $5 bill? You do. Brian, do you think I can do it? Yeah. You think I can do it? Do you think I can do it? No, okay. So I got one doubter. Well, the story we're about to hear in a few minutes is about doubting Thomas. And after Jesus rose from the dead on Easter, the, Jesus reappeared to the disciples. Everybody but Thomas. Thomas wasn't there at the time. And he revealed himself to them. So when Thomas came back, he said, the disciples told him that they had seen Jesus. And he said, oh, you did not. You don't know. No, I don't believe you. You're spoofing me. Have you ever said somebody tried to spoof you or tease you? Mm hmm Well, Thomas thought they were all teasing him. So he did not believe it. He said, I won't believe until I put my finger in the holes in his hands and my hand in his side. So... Sure enough, Jesus came back to that special room. Now Thomas was there and revealed himself to Thomas. And you know what Jesus said? Blessed are those who believe without seeing. But since I have at least one person's question in this, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Dear God, help us to believe in our heart the truths we find in your holy word, even though we have not seen them with our own eyes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys, for coming up. I appreciate it. What a blessing. I didn't believe you could do it. I didn't even know what you were trying to do. <laughs> yeah, I figured that out. You got to show me. I don't even know how it works, but it does. That's a mystery, huh? Listen for uh, the word today from the Gospel of John, 
Uh, we're going to read from the 20th chapter, starting at the 19th verse. And my version might be just a little different. It's probably the same. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, and peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the 12, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told them, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, put, the, put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. May God add a blessing to our hearing and understanding of these words of scripture. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for your word in our hearing and in our hearts. May the words of my mouth, may the thoughts in all of our hearts be yours, O oh God. Connect us to you. Make us yours. We pray it in your name. Amen. So, Chris, do I have to stay here? Can I move? You'll be able to find me? Good. Appreciate it. Let me know. I want to have people out in TV land not be able to see. I'm good. All right. I appreciated the, the children's talk. Um, because I I didn't I don't understand that it's unbelievable, right? <laughs> unbelievable. It's one of my my wife's favorite words. Said it last night. We were out walking. We had dinner uh, near my house, and and we saw this beautiful flowering tree. He said, "Unbelievable! Look at that." I, mean, I don't know how you use the word a lot. I do. I'm partly because I pick up on her. But this season, have you noticed the daffodils this year and the tulips? And they're unbelievable. It's it's just like, what's going on? There's something special this year. It's it's really great. And so, I you know we'll point to it, and Kathy will say, "Isn't that unbelievable?" Yeah. Huh? 
knows what it means. You know, sometimes, Princess Bride, you ever see that movie? Or, I'm not sure you know what that word means. But uh, so we'll see a dancer or a great singer, and uh, we'll say, wow, that's unbelievable. Or in our whole trip last month in Mexico, I was, I was down there for the month, and she was down there for just a, a week. But we, you know, we just kept saying, this is unbelievable that we're here. When we got home, we said, this is unbelievable. <laughs> you know, I, I couldn't believe I was there. But then we ran into friends from Washington, D.C. at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Just by chance, you know, I mean, friend from high school from Cincinnati, and we run into them in New York. What do you think we said? You got the idea by now. <laughs> Who would have thought? I tell you what, I can't believe how many times we say something's unbelievable. It's, your pastor sent me an article this week. I, uh, he was telling me about, uh, a nurse who is caring for a 14-year-old. I don't know if you heard about this. She was caring for a 14-year-old who had triplets. She was a nurse, and she really taken care of her. And you know what she did? She adopted the 14-year-old and the three kids. Is that unbelievable? It's a great thing. Now, negative things can be unbelievable too, right? You say, maybe you say that too when you read the newspaper. You say, I mean, I, I just heard it this morning. Rob was playing, and he mentioned another school shooting. But that's just unbelievable. How crazy is that? How could we? How could this be happening uh, in in our world? And or. Or I can't believe what so-and-so said this week. Insert the name of your least favorite politician, you know. I, I, I was with Pastor David a few years ago when uh, we were at a, some kind of a church function and we drove together. And uh, it started to rain on our way back. It was pouring rain. Just pouring. And we came to, uh, it was a, we were on the expressway, some kind of big road. I forget what it was. But we were driving back, and, and all of a sudden, the road was a river. There's just so much water in there, mud coming down off of the side. We didn't think we were going to make it home. And you know what we said? It's, I, when I got home, I just sighed. I said, that was unbelievable so when we find the overwhelming beauty of dogwoods and daffodils unbelievable when we find the most recent bad news unbelievable we might want to give Thomas a little slack don't you think don't you think we could give him a little bit of slack when he's having trouble believing, when he heard about the resurrection of Jesus, I mean, it was literally unbelievable. We likely would have said the same thing. It's unbelievable. It's like, I mean, it's kind of the definition of unbelievable that somebody comes back from the dead, right? Right? It was harder than that for Thomas, though. It was harder than that for him. His denial was not just blurted disbelief. His denial came from a kind of personal conviction, from feeling convicted as one of the disciples who ran when Jesus was arrested. Likely he didn't feel any better than Peter or even Judas. He felt horrible. 
and he felt like, like, I mean, I imagine him, a, a poet helped me with this this week. I'm going to read some of his poem. Uh, a pastor, poet, friend of mine, Reverend Steve Garnes Holmes from uh, Vermont. He's in Vermont now. He, he talked about this. But he said, Judah, I mean, Thomas kind of felt like he was part of the killing. He felt so convicted that he, that he felt like it was partly his fault. His denial was partly a feeling of unforgivability. He just didn't feel like he could be forgiven. Don't just give me a happy ending, a good story to tell, he might have said, according to my poet friend. It's not that I doubt he's alive. I just want to make sure he's the one who was dead. A nice recovery would please me, but not save me. The one you say is risen? Did he rise from a real grave? Or just an imagined one? Did he overcome my sin? Or just your disappointment? I want to see the holes of the nails I put there. I want to know that the one who's living is the one I killed. That my evil has been undone. That my guilt has been forgiven. If I touch his wounds, maybe he'll touch mine. And in that touch, heal. Look, friends, we're like Thomas. We're like Thomas, not just in our unbelief, but in our denial. We don't believe that we can be forgiven a lot of times. Partly because we can't even admit how badly we have sinned. Am I right? Because we don't believe how badly we have fallen short. It's hard for us to admit. It's hard for us to trust or recognize Jesus' resurrection because we can't acknowledge our own part in Jesus' ongoing persecution. Here's what I'm talking about. I've been working as a pastor in the United Methodist Church for, well, I, I served for 36 years. And during most of that time, for the last, for all, well, all that time, I've been working on uh, anti-racism work and trying to uncover my own complicity in racism. The racism of our denomination, the racism of our neighborhood, uh, the racism in, in my personal life. And do that, I've had to own and identify with the history of my people. My beloved white middle class, brothers and sisters, some of the nicest, most caring people in the world, but who are taught to be in deep denial about our past and blind to our present circumstance, blind to what's going on right now. All around us. We don't even notice how much it hurts us to, uh, to live in that way, to live in isolation from other people, to live in denial, to live in, uh, in, in ways that we can't see things that are going on all around us. We don't know how much it hurts us. We can't follow or admit how much it hurts us to be scared all the time, to have deep fears that we don't want to talk about or we don't want to admit. 
We don't want to see it. We don't want to admit it. It's like, it's like we don't want to be healed. We don't believe that we can be healed. Well, let me tell you, the really unbelievable thing is that we can be healed, that we are healed, that, we, that grace is offered to us. Grace upon grace upon grace is offered to us, that we are part of the resurrection, that we uh, as a church, that we as a community, that we as individuals are part of the resurrection. Christ is alive in our world and in our lives. Unbelievable. As sure as Thomas knew Christ's grace when he touched the wounds in his side, so that grace is available to us as well. That grace is available to us as we touch the wounds of the world and find forgiveness and sight and awareness and connection and love and peace and possibility. That grace is available to us. We are healed just like Thomas was. Thanks be to God. May it be so. There's just one more thing I want to say, though, today, besides that we can be healed. Pastor David has been on a journey with me in this conference most of the time I've been a pastor. He came and was, uh, he was an intern at one of my, my second church that I served in West Philadelphia. And uh, he was a mentee of mine in that time. And uh, I love him dearly. So I just want to say that I'm really glad that he got a chance to be your pastor and that you had a chance to work with him in ministry. And I'm glad to get this chance today to appreciate his ministry and your ministry together in this place. And I'm glad to... Uh, also, let you know, I know your new pastor as well. Your new pastor is com coming is Reverend Robert Johnson, I understand, from Tinley Temple. He's been one of the most highly respected pastors in the black community for decades in this conference and in this city, in our denomination. You are going to be blessed. to have an experienced, smart, determined minister of the living God as your pastor. You're going to be blessed. You'll have to do the work, of course. Can't expect any pastor to do the work for you, the work of caring for each other, the work of singing, the work of, of caring for the children like you do, the work of reaching out to new people, the work of of sending yourselves out in mission to the world. And beyond that, you'll have to do something extra. Some extra work that you're going to have to do around the kind of thing I'm talking about today. Of owning and confessing our history. Opening our eyes, as we sang this morning, to grace and to the world and accepting that grace and spreading it and, and figuring out how it applies to us in particular. Loving and connecting God's people, opening to new circles and new possibilities and cultivating courage to challenge all our fears. This work is not optional for you anymore if it ever was. It's not going to be optional during this time of this next pastor. It might sound like a lot, and it is, 
but it's worth it. The journey that you're on and the journey you have ahead of you is a powerful and beautiful and exciting journey. And the more you do the work of ministry, the more you'll get out of it. I mean, that's always the case, right? The more you do the work of ministry, the more you get out of it. And you are up to the task because you know this unbelievable truth. That Christ is risen. That Christ is alive and living in your midst, living in this community, living now among us and uniting us and making amazing things possible. More than we ever believed could happen. More than we ever believed could be possible. You might have trouble believing, but, but you trust in this truth. If you trust in this truth, it'll bring you life and energy and power. So I invite you today to trust it. Trust it and believe in it, even if it's hard to believe. Trust and accept and live it. Trust in the resurrection. The resurrection life that is among you. Resurrection, as Matthew Fox says, is a commitment to hope and being reborn. It is a commitment to creativity, to the spirit who makes all things new, as it says in Revelation. Resurrection is the Spirit's work, and it's the life of the Spirit. You're being offered an unbelievable opportunity through the same boundless, limitless, depthless love and power that created the unbelievable dogwood right outside this window. In those daffodils, in this beautiful world, and the resurrection of Christ. Believe it. Amen. Please stand and join us in our next song Christ has risen.
You may be seated. We have been blessed by God. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, who was crucified and rose again last week so that we would be free from sin. There are many other blessings which he has supplied us with. At this point, we would ask the usher to come forward and we could share some of those blessings back to God. There's a spirit of love in 
His place. You can see it, but it's there, just as precious as the air. There's a spirit of love in this place. Oh, hallelujah, sing hallelujah. We bless your holy name. Oh, hallelujah, sing hallelujah. There's a spirit of love in this place. We uh, have already mentioned today uh, the uh, death of Claire Marie Sherlock. Is it Yanni? Yanni? She, she was nicknamed Yanni. And Yanni. she was very instrumental in getting this church involved in the Redbird Mission. Wow. So she, her life was a blessing uh, to people in this place. And we remember her this, this week. And uh, pray for a wonderful celebration of her life on uh, April 21st. I noticed in the bulletin also we're praying for the Lee Park family and for Dave Pennypacker. And as I mentioned, I, I heard uh, Rob talking about uh, another shooting in Alabama yesterday. He said, uh, so we'll pray for the people that are dealing with that. And, we have another in Louisville. Oh my goodness! I have friends in Louisville. I, I can't, just can't imagine what what that's like for them at this point. It's so hard. So let's let's bring our concerns and our hopes and our our our. Uh, prayers to God in this moment. Gracious God, we thank you for this unbelievably beautiful day. For the, the dogwood and the daffodil, for the tulips and the flowering trees all around us that help us to know that you are alive in our midst. We thank you this day for being together in your community for the young people in, in this congregation and, for the, and the, for the people who are tuning in from their homes that we have the possibility to reach past these walls and bring your message to the world. We thank you for the hope that is engendered in us even as we hear difficult and hard news in this place. Forgive us, oh God, that that we sometimes can't see, that we often uh, are isolated in our own places out of fear or out of just not, not being able to imagine that we have a part to play in making your world a better place. Guide us as your people, guide us as your church, guide us as your community to be your hands, your voice, your feet in the world. We thank you that your grace has visited us this day and any day that we open our hearts and open our lives to you. We pray in particular this day for those that we have lifted up were uh, for the family of Claire Marie Sherlock, for the Lee Park family, for 
Dave Pennypacker for the people in Alabama and Louisville, for all those who are dealing with pain and suffering in this world. We pray for all of these and for the ones that we hold now in the silence of our hearts. Hear our prayer, O oh God, hear all of these prayers as we sing to you, as we sing the prayer which you taught us to pray. Bye. 
y'all had a good time here <laughs> and uh and they told me yes i'm glad to hear it thank you for uh, welcoming welcoming me today into uh into your church for uh the work you do as a community for the music that you sing for the hope that you bring to the world now go from this place in peace as a people blessed by god as a people connected and loved, as a people indeed resurrected. Go and spread the good news in the name of God, our Creator, Christ, our Redeemer, the Holy Spirit of love that lives and moves among us all. Amen.